And I'm Matt Hanna. And this is Horror Hour with the Hannas. Where we like to talk about all your favorite scary movies that you might have not seen this year because they had limited releases. Yeah. So like Matt said, today we are talking about some horror movies that didn't have wide theatrical releases, at least not in our country that we knew about. So we're going to do mini reviews, essentially, of three films, Strange Darling, Exuma, and It's What's Inside. How much had you heard of any of these movies before I insisted we cover them? I had only heard of Exuma, and it was just because of the internet. Yeah, That's not true, because a bunch of people sent you, like someone texted you and said you should watch It's What's Inside. One person, you're right. I forgot about that. And I had someone else, shout out Anna, tell me that we should watch it too. So I knew people who had seen that. And then on the internet, I heard people talking about Strange Darling or Exuma. But I hadn't, I didn't know anyone personally who had seen them. So other than it's what's inside. I don't know anybody who's seen the other two. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, I still don't. So yeah, excited to cover them. And is the game plan just get right into spoilers since we're doing short? Yeah, we are. So if you do not want spoilers for these movies whatsoever, we'll try not to spoil the end or anything. But if you don't want spoilers for these movies whatsoever, this might not be your episode. I'll warn you now. Side note, if you want to watch this on video on YouTube, you will see a cat feature. Because I am currently (laughs) holding our 15-year-old black cat, Lily, because she insisted... That she wanted she to be a part of it. attention right when we went to record. She wanted to be today's guest. And she is a snuggle bug. So I will be holding her until she declines said holding. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about Strange Darling. Strange Darling was written and directed by J.T. Mulner, starring Willa Fitzgerald and Kyle Gowner. Kyle is actually in another 2024 new release because he played the ex-boyfriend of... The main character in Smile, so he's in Smile 2. Yeah, he's right at the beginning of Smile 2. I made that so convoluted the way I said that. (laughs) It's the cop in Smile 2 and Smile. So um, for plot description on this one, we're just doing like quick, like back of the box. So this is nothing is what it seems when a twisted one night stand spirals into a serial killer's vicious murder spree. Did you know that that was the movie description plot description before we started? the No, I had no idea. Okay, so I knew that. So going in, like, I had an expectation, I think, because of that. And I also knew it was the girl who was the serial killer going in. Spoilers. So the (laughs) entire time I was like, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? But meanwhile, Matt didn't know that there was, one, serial killing, and two, he didn't know that it was the girl because... You know, I think stereotypically we expect it to be well, the man. Well, you're, you're bearing the lead a little. So the whole movie is told non-chronologically via chapters. And the first couple chapters set it up where you see the man chasing down the woman and you believe he's the serial killer. Turns out once you finally go backwards, like in your uh, memento type situation, like that movie, you find out it's actually her that's the serial killer and he's a cop chasing her. That's the whole purpose of this movie is basically to do this gimmick. And I will say that's like where my issues kind of stem from it because that's really all this has going for it, in my opinion, is like, let's just do this cool non-chronological thing because we're going to play on your expectations of men are killers typically, but it's actually her. Unfortunately, I just don't think it does anything beyond that. But what did you think? Well, I agree that its main purpose was just like women can also be serial killers tight, But I did really like other parts of the movie. I thought Willa Fitzgerald was fantastic in this. The only time I'd ever seen her was in Fall of the House of Usher as young Madeline. And then I know people really liked her, but I didn't necessarily care. And she really knocked it out of the park here. I didn't recognize it as the same person because she's doing something completely different. And she looks deranged. I didn't recognize her. I really liked her in this. I also really liked a lot of the colors in the film, especially the first scene. Like when we first started the movie, one, it starts with like this really cool chase scene hook. And, or at least I thought it was cool. I made a face because I didn't think it was, it was fine. But go ahead. I thought it was an interesting way to start the movie since we don't know these characters at all. 
like why there is a chase scene and again it just makes you think that he is the predator chasing her but the colors of the scene were really pretty and i do think that a lot of this movie i did like the way it was shot or like the coloring in it yeah it looks fine i I think overall i found this to be very mediocre so like from from every aspect it's it's very fine it's like serviceable i think like where i get stuck is that i i (laughs) don't feel like it really justifies what it's going for, I guess. Like, it really feels like a proof of concept more than a movie, or really like an experiment. Then it and feels the experiment like, uh, being told the nonlinear, non-con- yeah, yeah, the nonlinear story. Um, and I, I think it's fun to do that. I think that it would be more interesting if they did more with it and said more with it, other than, like, just showing how we are basically don't judge a book by its cover. Like we're going to show you one thing. It's just like a kind of audience manipulation. Well, I would say it's because the themes of this movie just really aren't deep. And yeah, I would say that the structure of the film being non-chronological does contribute towards that theming and purpose. I just think that the theming and purpose of just like, like you said, don't judge a book by its cover. Women can also be serial killers is a really weak final thesis. Yeah. That's the problem. But I did really like chapters one and three. Like, I like how this movie gets started. I thought that was really fun. And then it kind of going back to, like, these characters meeting and deciding to hook up. I thought that that was pretty fun. And then leaping back forward again. I thought one of the chapters, chapter five, I just did not find fun. I felt like it dragged. That's the one where he's looking for her in the house. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt like that really dragged. But I thought all of the stuff before that was pretty interesting and entertaining to me. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I remember a, a couple things. Overall, I mean, it was fine. That's that's kind of what I keep coming back to. I don't really, wouldn't really recommend it, to be honest. Um, I think you're right, though. The, the coloring's good. It's like pretty well lit movie overall. But I don't have much more to say about it. You got other thoughts? My, I, I, my same gripe I'm just going to keep going to, which is that I think the structure is Are you is, kidding is me? You're going to yeah. talk about one of the three films for five minutes and call that enough? I guess I can. Go, I got more. What else we have? I'll just keep complaining and then you'll tell me I'm complaining too much. Because you are complaining too much because just like any movie we cover, there's like merit to discussion. Sure. I just can't really get off of the structure thing. Which because I feel like that's the only thing this movie is trying to do, and that's why I keep like coming back to it. Can I? Can I I'll tell you another complaint I had that doesn't have to do with the structure, though. And I do okay. think. Okay. Okay. So there's a part that really, really upset me in this movie. Do you know what it was? No. Okay. So when they show up to help her, or to to help her, the killer, because they think that she's a victim. Mm-hmm. The victim pulls her pants down and basically makes it look like it was an assault scene. Oh, I know what you're gonna and say. And. Yeah. The there are two cops, a man and a woman, and the man is like, no, don't touch her. We don't know what it is. And the woman is like, this woman is clearly the victim. Like she's like, looks like the victim. We should believe her. Let me like help her. And the woman cop who is the idiot in the eyes of the movie. I, I for people not on camera, I did a uh, air, air quotes. quotes. She's like seen as dumb, dumb woman that sees a victim as a, another woman. She's bad for doing that because she basically ends up setting her free by doing that. And they basically just like play her and everyone dies because of it. And she's like the big dumbass for believing the woman and believing the person yeah. that looks like the victim and trying to, uh, you know, help as like, you know, police are, I guess, not actually required to do, but we would expect them to. And that really pissed me off because I was like, what is this movie saying? Like, it's this don't judge a book by its cover. Like women can be evil too. But then when you go down that route, it becomes a whole new disgusting thing. Of yeah. Like, it becomes like very anti me too movement where and that's what it felt like, like it's been this the last couple of years as a society, we've really tried to work towards this. Like if a, it's very unlikely that a women, women, a woman will come out and accuse someone of sexual assault, especially a person in the limelight, if it's not true. Statistically, statistically, that's very, it, it very does happen, but it's infrequently it's, yes. happens, and we should be believing women. And I've had like this issue with like friends even. So having this movie say, oh, she was dumb for believing the woman. Yeah, I agree. I felt that was extremely 
counterproductive and kind of gross. It And because of that, had that not, part not been there, I don't think I would have worried. That solidified that is the main thesis of the movie to me is like women be liars sometimes is like legitimately what I, I walked away with from that. And I was just like, ooh, and that kind of like really left a huge sour taste in my mouth. So I went online to see if other people felt this way. And I was not the only one that like walked away with that yeah. feeling. So maybe that's why I'm a little more negative about the whole thing. Yeah, I think that's fine. I definitely had a problem with that as well. My, I still like the movie overall though, because to me, it felt like a misstep not the creator feeling like we should I hope support so. women. Or at least that's what I hope, of course. Yeah, I don't like, know I, I... Of course I would hope that. And I feel like there's not enough else besides that going for it that would lead me to believe that he thinks women are lying about being raped or sexually assaulted. Oh, interesting. No, I, I but, felt, I felt opposite of that. Like I legitimately was like, oh, is this what this is actually all oof. trying to say? Like, is this that classic like Twitter argument? Of men basically being like, well, it's, you know, not all the time. You know, sometimes women are lying about this and the ones that basically say that a lot. And we've just saw that whole thing with Conor McGregor's uh, trial. Oh, this is hurting me. I'm sorry. This is why I was hating on the movie. No, you were hating on the movie for other reasons. Oh, but this, I think this is. (laughs) This is a fair complaint. A fair complaint. I will give you that. Yeah. So. But but, it does tie back to the whole reason we have the structure out of order is because they want to be like set us up to be like, yeah, you believed the women, woman, didn't you, idiot? Guess what? She was the killer the whole time. But the only way they can actually successfully no, do that. No, that's not true because that's not how the story unfolds. Like, I would disagree with that. I don't think the whole movie is like, yeah, you're dumb for believing the woman. I think that plain- this happens after we already know she's the serial killer. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying though the first couple chapters are before we know she's the killer. And that's, yeah, but I don't it's think setting that, us that's up. not the believe women part no, it is. of anything. I think it is. No, because we see her as the victim because that's how the information is presented to us. And we are tricked by the way the information is presented to us to then show later, like, well, guess what? Your pre- preconceived notions were wrong. She actually is the bad guy. So to me, those feel like they go together. That's why I felt that the whole movie kind of had this like evil theme. Yeah, I see why you think that they go together. I guess I just didn't connect that with the earlier parts of the nonlinear storytelling. And frankly, I like having a woman bad guy. Oh, I agree with that. I like completely. having this like deranged lady serial killer. I think it goes downhill, like you said, at that scene. Yeah. But prior to that, even if I thought that the purpose of the film was pretty bare minimum, I was having fun with it. Like, there's this scene that it cuts to when it does the chapter change where it just starts with him choking her. And I think that's a really cool, like, subversion of your expectations because you think he's choking her to kill her, but he's really choking her because she asked him to because she likes rough sex. So there was a lot with those scenes that I thought were really fun. Where they like play with you a little bit, like oh something bad yeah. is happening. Oh no, nope. That's nope, it's again, just play. That was like the whole purpose of the movie was to just play with those expectations via its form of like the nonlinear story, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Yeah, but those yes. scenes w- were fun. So, and I agree with you. Uh, yeah, they're fun, and I agree with you that like yeah, let's get badass. Well, badass, but woman serial killer, it's woman bad guy. But it's unfortunate that they felt the only way they could justify doing it is by doing this nonlinear story to like play with our expectations, right? Like that's what's kind of shitty about it. I opinion. think it would be fine as long as it doesn't end up with a fake sexual yeah. assault allegation. Okay. I think that's where it crosses a line into I making you uncomfy. We just feel differently about it. That's fine. Yeah. I think I, mine does just come back to that I don't really like the, the chapter thing. I thought... I did like some of the chapters a lot. Like, I think it went from three to one or two. And I liked that. It was chapters five onward that I just didn't really engage with. So when it would flash to those, I was like, nah. (laughs) So what would you rate it then? Oh, I don't remember what I gave it on Letterboxd, but I think I gave it like a four out of ten. Oof. 
I would give it higher than a four, but I don't know if I would go above a six, six and a half. I liked it better than movies that we have like covered on the podcast. Hmm. Like having just... You know, I gave it a, a five out of ten, actually. I went and looked. Okay, I think that's more appropriate. I think four is extremely low. Even with the criticisms of what the movie's trying to say, I can acknowledge it being a well-made movie in terms of performances and okay. the way it looks and all of that jazz. You don't want me to complain, but you keep saying things that make me want to complain. Because <laughs> when you say well-made, I start to think about, well, I just don't like the, f- I don't like the form of the movie. Which is its whole thing. So like that just I just, just loses me right away. And that's fine. Okay, whatever. That's it. I don't need to say anything else. I think something like Momentum I re- or Momentum, Memento I really like. I haven't seen that in years, so I can't really well, comment. It feels more connected to the character who has, uh, what is it, like short-term memory. Where mm-hmm. this one's just kind of like, well, we just wanted to do to have these fun gotcha moments. And that's my complaint. I will, mm-hmm. And I'm done. I won't say anything else. Okay. We at Horror Hour of the Hannahs know all about the chaos of setting the perfect holiday scene, like our last Halloween party. Hunting for decorations in clutter bins is sometimes scarier than any horror movie, so why not do your future self a favor and make organizing a breeze? You can buy Smart Labels QR code labels on Amazon and stick them on your storage bins. Download the Smart Labels app, scan the QR code, and catalog all the stuff going into the container. Then, months down the road when you're looking for that item, you can just search in the app and it'll tell you where you put it. Don't let missing decorations haunt you. Just slap a smart label on your bin, scan, and relax knowing the next holiday will be terrifyingly easy. So let's move on to a movie that I think we're going to be in more agreement with. So, Ixuma, directed and written by Jang Jae Ho. Yun. And, you got it right. Oh, I feel great about that. So, Matt, give us the back the box description. Okay, the process of ex- ex- uh, excavating an ominous grave unleashes dreadful consequences buried underneath. That tells you nothing. Nothing. So, I, I loved gi- it. I'll give you my what I remember. Basically, they're in um, oh, they're in South Korea, right? And over there, there's actually these guys called like geomancers that are. They feel land up, is how I would put it. And feel they, they land and up. yeah, I mean, they basically go and they feel how the land feels and like spiritually how it feels. Um, so yeah, the big handle looked it up, but it's basically like supernatural powers to find hidden knowledge in land. So he's uh, what he does is they sell grave plots. Yeah, um, and he gets pulled in by a woman who's like a medium with her partner brother. I'm not really sure who gets pulled into this rich family. Where their dad and everyone in the family is, is dreaming of grandpa who's dead, like suffocating them in their sleep. Right? Follow me so far? Am I, do I have it? And they I basically need to go. Dreaming, ex- I don't know if they're dreaming of him or if what happens. He said he is feels his presence. He right? feels something present and it makes him and, scream and, and it feels like it's like choking him yes. or like suffocating him. And, and his him. baby is, is in pain. <laughs> What instigates it is that he, the baby is born and the baby has not stopped crying since being born. Yeah. So they're calling in the squad the, to the help them figure squad. it out. And so what they need to do is exhume the body, which is buried on this really bad land. They exhume the body. Nope. Stop there. Nope. Stop We're there. done. Okay, because that's it. you're going to get into where it like spoils so much. But basically they get to go ex- ex- exhume grandpa and spiritual things happen. Yeah. And I think what's cool is... Um, in general, I think we've talked about this before, but um, American movies or Hollywood movies versus like Korean movies in the, the U.S., we don't really go down supernatural when it comes to actual detective work. Like we kind of just mm-hmm. that, we kind of brush that off where I know in other countries there is a real belief of like we can look at this from a spiritual angle. We can solve this from a spiritual angle. And I appreciate seeing that in another movie because it allows me to like suspend my disbelief where – the telling the same story in a, from an American mindset. Oh, this is not how it would have gone at all. Uh, <laughs> two, and at 90 minutes of it would have just been convincing the characters that a supernatural entity or presence yeah, was feasible. They wouldn't have exhumed the body or even tried to until like yes. two hours but, in but versus pretty, this movie is like immediately it's the exhuming. Immediately the belief is, okay, it's a spiritual matter. We, we go to the spiritual counselor to fix this. And that's and what I, makes watching movies from other cultures really interesting. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate that. I think it's a lot more fun. And like I said, it's I'm able to suspend my disbelief because 
the characters can as well. So, yeah. And maybe they actually do believe in that. I don't know if this is a practice that actually happens. I, I would believe it, though, based on the movie presents it in a way that makes it believable. So. Yeah. So we obviously are not experts in South Korean culture. What I found interesting about this movie watching this as someone who isn't super familiar with South Korean culture is that there are some elements of the plot that are very much rooted in South Korean and Japanese history, um, specifically the conflict between the two countries. So what I would recommend read up on is that. <laughs> reading up on the relationship between those two countries historically before watching. I think this movie going in knowing that would offer a lot. And I think thematically it I, I like what it's doing and I think it actually becomes very concise. I think we actually like did ourselves a disservice by not knowing that. And mm-hmm. it, you, there is like a lot you will miss out on. Yeah. And again, maybe it's not made for us. It is like made for a South Korean audience. But even if it's, it's still not good. quote made for me, I I liked this movie. I think it does kind of go with like this one plot and then there's like a boom we're going in a slightly different direction. And but we were, I think we were it, hype when that happened. I think it works really well and it gets really interesting. But regardless of which direction we are moving in, I felt both were very engaging. Like I found yes. like all the storylines in this movie were very engaging. And all of the characters, while they might be not be like overly fleshed out, I did feel like they all did have their own distinct personality and they did have their reasons for being there. And it made you... You did root for them. Like I agree. This movie does something that I think is just so awesome and had me like smiling ear to ear, which is that the base conflict you are sold on, this is not a spoiler to say, gets solved less than halfway through the movie. Mm-hmm. So then you go, oh my God, where are we now? going? And like there's this real sense of like excitement that like this is way deeper and darker than initially sold. So for me, I was, I was mm-hmm. hype. Because it really does feel like it's going to go with this base conflict. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's over. Now what? Yeah. And um, I, yeah, that that was probably where my I was most excited and like was really like locked into this movie. I also think just like at its core, the concept of exhuming a body is really scary. <laughs> so well, I the, felt well, like yeah. as it started, I was like, oh, fuck. And the, the reason they exhume here, too, is to like. Let basically Lay let him the spirit. To rest yeah, properly. the spirit is unhappy. We're set up in the very beginning that a grandma is unhappy because uh, her grandson took her dentures and she can't eat in the afterlife because of it. Yeah, so like their reason for exhuming the body is actually like very sweet. They're trying to make sure that their loved one is rest peacefully, so the rest of the family can also essentially live in yeah. peace and not be bothered by their deceased family member. But obviously. We went in knowing it's a horror movie, so we knew that there'd be something more sinister happening with the main body that they're exhuming. And I think that that is just like a really, really fun hook. And I really liked it. It was great. I like this movie a lot. Yeah, I think it's very pretty looking. Um, I it's it is scary. There are like pretty a lot of like dreadful moments and just overall just like so interesting. Like it is almost like a mystery thriller in some ways, a, a supernatural mystery thriller, mm-hmm. which like, I love that shit. Yeah. It's easy for me to get sucked into something like that. And I feel like every time we were at the one grave site, I was hiding or like tempted to hide. They, I don't know if I actually hit, evil. but I kept being like, Ooh, what's going to happen? Like hand halfway covering my face, ready to full hide if I needed to, you know? And then I think it does really pull into a real world evil of this conflict between South Korea and Japan Mm -hmm. that I think would hit harder if like you were more directly affected by that. Or knowledgeable. I mean, that that conflict, I believe they said it was like 1990 or the 1900s to like the 1940s, like post until end of World War II. So it's like not that old of a conflict that I think they were really like talking about and it's you get this real sense of like an evil because of that and Mm -hmm. very interesting yeah yeah i think looking back on it since i have more knowledge now you like it more i like it more so that's why go to the wikipedia page and (laughs) yeah yeah that's that's I, i feel like uh, I, I like when a horror movie really can like dive into this real world conflict that is 
more scary than what a supernatural element could be and then mm-hmm. kind of like gives it a supernatural evil to go along with it that kind of gives you the feeling of what the real world like evil well like is. we've always said horror is supposed to be or is works its best when it's a societal critique i, I think so s- talking about societal meanings and this one's very much just about like the torment that Japan did on South Korea. I mean, it really was, mm-hmm. from my understanding, pretty one sided. Yeah. Um, and that Japan just like did some really, really awful stuff. That was, you know, pre World War II or end of World War II Japan, which is a very different place. Yeah. So, yeah. If you want to read up on it and you trust Wikipedia, Korea under Japanese. Why would you trust rule? Wikipedia? Wikipedia is a great source. Yeah. They got some, some, they had best minds working on that website. Like, actually, there's some, like, crazy guys that keep that apart. Wikipedia works, really. Because anyone good. could say shit. Yeah, but then but you need to put a you citation. Have these, you have these then... mega nerds, and I'm sorry to call them mega nerds because they're, like, the backbone of society that are, like, keeping that stuff constantly, like, truthful and updated, supposedly. So, like, if you go in and, like, edit, you'll, you'll have a guy come in immediately and hmm. fix stuff. And they're all sort the, – all the um, sources are cited at the bottom. So you can yeah, the, the I know. Stuff. I always look at yeah. the citations. Like when I used to write a paper or something, yeah, I would go to, go to the first. citations yeah. of Wikipedia and then use those articles to cite. I mean with the death of the internet, Wikipedia is better than a lot of places considering like AI article slop that has like, shit. completely destroyed it. What? It's true. That shit sucks. Oh, oh well, they say holy shit that I'm bringing it up. Like, yeah, the internet's very broken right now. This year, for example, I kept looking up – cuckoo's release date because it got moved and changed and every time i looked it up it said this completely wrong month Mm -hmm. and i got so convinced that it was releasing that i was like okay team what day do we want to go see this and matt dalton was like it doesn't come out yet it's not out for a couple months dummy you have two issues you have ai work basically pulling bad information but you also have all of the articles are ai written to get clicks so you have massive amounts of articles that are just slop being released then you have the ai pulling from the ai and then they do an iterative cycle on each other and then you just basically get Mm. false information so internet and there's broken links the internet's in a bad place right now it's very sad actually r.i.p we grew up in the greatest era of the internet I know. it was actually the most useful thing i go on like the engineering forums which sounds really nerdy and there's all these mm-hmm. links that seem helpful all of them are dead 404 on all of them like huh. so that's yeah. sad it's the information is just gone sad that's the real horror the real <laughs> let's talk about the death of the internet yes. <laughs> now i want to sing welcome to the internet by bill burnham so he was – it's not even that anymore, though. He didn't even predict that it would be, like, basically unusable. No, but his point still his stands. Stance. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about it's what's inside. Oh, we have nothing – do we have anything negative to say about Exuma? Anything? Oh, we need to rate it, too. Yeah. Shit. Oh, we got off on this off. tangent, man. Oh. Um, so I was going to say – the only things I don't particularly like about Exuma is I do think it probably loses a little bit of steam by the end. Yeah, it does. And I will say my lack of um, contextual historical – knowledge made it a little more confusing for me uh but like overall i think it's it is fun and scary and like it's going to be different from any other anything else you see so yeah no i agree i think it is like a unique film to come out of this year and just thinking about one of my other favorite south korean films is train to busan i'm like okay like sign me up for any South Korean horror movie, I guess. Do we consider Parasite a horror movie? Well, that's an incredible I'm, I'm, South Korean I, 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 film I'm, as well. I'm counting it. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, well, I will rate. Um, I'm giving Exuma a seven out of ten. I'm gonna go seven and a half. And I think if we, again, weren't American dum dums, it might have been higher. <laughs> but here we are. Well, it's just not our history, and not history we would have been taught about. I feel like maybe we were when we blacked it out, though. Yeah, it's possible. That's my, that's my worry is that we sound really dumb because we should have known it. But whoop. Well. Not. It's what's done is done, man. Okay. All right. Last one. It's What's Inside, directed by Greg Jardin and written by him as well, starring Brittany O'Grady. Matt, why don't you give us our back of the box summary? Okay. So. Uh, A group of friends gather for a pre-wedding party that descends into an existential nightmare when an estranged friend arrives with a mysterious game that awakens long-hidden secrets, desires, and grudges. Okay, so, spoiler, we're not going to give away the end, but 
spoiler here, uh, what's inside <laughs> is like a machine that makes you swap bodies. And so they do it as a game and they play, uh, like figure out who's in whose body. Which is so freaking funny. This movie isn't super horror. I would say it's more comedy, but we can throw it in there. It had horror comedy. probably the most unique visual style of all three of these. Oh, it like, was very fun. Easily really, really cool looking. Really, director knew exactly how they wanted this movie to look and like were able to mm-hmm. maintain that style throughout. I appreciated a lot of the like no name actors that were in it. I think that like really helped. Yeah, I didn't know anyone. I and I'm supposed to know Brittany O'Grady because she was in at least one of the seasons of White Lotus, but I don't remember her. So, but it's basically just a bunch of dumb young adults right before marriage that get together as a big party and they body uh, swap. They body swap and drink a lot and do drugs, and it's not good. It doesn't turn out good for them. No, no, no. It is such a funny body swap concept. I don't know if I've experienced a body swap movie that brought me as much joy as this. I mean, young me loved Freaky Friday. <laughs> I got to say. But this was... The thing is, there's all kinds of like love triangles and feelings and, and exes. So everyone's like, oh, well, I'm this person. So this person feels this way about me. But that person's also not themselves. Mm-hmm. So they like will go... Like and, characters like, start hooking up, but they're the, not... Yeah, with each, who with each other people's other bodies. Are. Yeah. So they'll be like, well, I find this body hot. And I think you might be this person. So like, that's fine. And then there's some lying and deceiving happening based off who's in whose body and who's attracted to who, which is really interesting. So it is really just like a, a vehicle to tell this, that kind of story. Yeah. Right? But then I won't say what it is. There is a really big twist that really throws everything on its head, like about at the halfway point. That twist is also well, the, really The twist fun. being like something crazy kind of happens and it makes you be like, oh, wait, what happens now? Like as, as an audience member, I was like, Oh, wait, like, where like, I was would like, wait, you where, go? What ha- yeah, that. uh-oh. Like, like I, thinking I was about speechless. it from, like, if I were in that position, like, I don't know what you do. And, like, everyone freaks out. Like, some people are just freaking out. Some people are trying we to figure out the solution. We can't say what happens, right? I don't want to say okay, what happens. Okay, what happens. That's fine. Because we spoiled Strange Darling enough. I think yeah. the rest of it. <laughs> but but it, 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 that's what I think really makes this work, though. Because you are like, oh, this is fun. Like, this is upsetting. Things happen. But then there's one inciting incident. And then I hadn't even thought about it. And I was like, wait, what? Like, it really was a, uh-oh, what happens now feeling. And it's like, very much an unplanned event. So yes. like, um, But I, yeah. I, I liked I liked this. It's not, like, amazing by but any stretch. I think the but, character dynamics are really fun. And there are a lot of characters, so we don't get to know too many of them too intimately. We really just have, like, two characters that we know fairly well. One that we really understand psychologically, I would say. But I think because they all have pretty distinct personalities and might be, like, caricatures, honestly, I think it works really well in this type of movie. Since we do have like 12 people swapping bodies. I think thematically this one is really interesting too. Did you have any like thematic analysis of this one? Because I did. So no, I don't. But go ahead. I think part of what this movie got me thinking about was what makes you you? Is it like how much of that is like what's inside like? The soul part of you, like your spirit or your body. I just watched a show that is going to mess up this whole conversation. So (laughs) because that's I just watched Neon Genesis Evangelion for the first time and just finished it today. And that is a big part of the last two episodes. So now I'm really thinking about that. Like and, and a big part of that is that what makes you you is other people's perception of you. Not just like what is inside Mm. of you. So it really ties into this one where other people's perception really does have to do with the physical, specifically in this. And even Gelly and I don't think that's the case. It's less about the physical and more about the relationship. But um, yeah, it's a funny that I just finished that. Yeah, that was my main takeaway, though, because we have this one character that their partner is more attracted to one of the other bodies. But it's like, I love you. And they're kind of like, well, do you love me? Because you're not attracted to my body, but you're attracted to my personality. So like, what does that make me? Uh, Yeah. 
Gross. And like, what does that Sad. mean for our relationship then? When you don't like the full me, because all of it is the full me, I think. And this it, movie yeah. did make me feel a little icky. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I Yeah. I think another thing that goes along with this, though, and that makes it a little challenging is I don't think any of the characters are overly likable. No. And I do find that. I that actually find our main character pretty likable, even the if man? she does. The man? Oh, the no. woman. The woman. the woman. Even if there's things she does that I disagree with, I think psychologically I get it. So. I get where where she stands, yes. But it, there's Everyone still, knows. everyone's like pretty unlikable. <laughs> Even she is at some points. Like, oh yeah, she makes choices that are fucked up. very much a good for her movie. <laughs> is that a spoiler? <laughs> That's a spoiler, my man. <laughs> um, But yeah, no, you make a good point. That is, it really is about, yeah, it's what's inside. What does it, what is our actual makeup? What makes us... I don't know if it goes far enough to really say anything no. profound about it, unlike Neon Genesis Evangelion. But <laughs> well, that's not what we're talking about. I know. I just. Buddy. I think it's funny because I it it does go it goes together. So, but yeah, I also think obviously it's just also about like relationship dynamics and what makes up our relationships and like why and how those matter. I don't know. It's very much just about how all the characters like interact and appreciate or not appreciate each other. So, yeah, I thought that was very fun. And basically the game is just a vehicle to get through all of that psychological shit. But I agree with you that I don't know if it goes far enough to like answer the question that it's making you ask. But yeah. maybe that's because that question doesn't have an answer. Yeah, I, I still think you could say... A little more, probably, and like kind of drive that theme mm -hmm. home a little more. But it also, this movie's more interested in doing fun body swap stuff. So it's like it, that theme is there. It's just not really expanded upon. If, it, yeah. I think that that's fine. Fair enough. I, I don't think it wanted to go more. I think it could have, though. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the visual style in this. I feel I like don't know how to explain it. It was pretty trippy that's, at times. Yeah. That's probably the best way to explain. Like, it's just very colorful, very a lot of motion. It feels like a stressful party. I was going to say it's like Climax, but Climax is a different visual style than this. There's some similarities. But. Yeah, I could see the comparison being made because I feel like it's a similar enough setting. Climax is better. I'm sorry. But. <laughs> They're doing very different things, I would Agreed. say. Do you have any other takeaways from this one? Things you didn't like? My, my didn't like was I think the characters being unlikable makes it, like as I said before, just um, hard, to hard to care as much. Um, it, it makes it hard to root for anybody. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of are just watching this train wreck, which can be a little exhausting. Um, and I think I already said my main complaint is that it's like th there is a thematic element there. I think it probably could have gotten a little more um, existential with it, to be honest. Like That's a little, fair. And that's fine that it doesn't, but sometimes I want that out of something like this. Yeah. So it, it is really just, it's fine. I think a lot of people liked it. I felt that it was like good. I, I thought it was, it was great. fun and pretty oh. lighthearted, all things considered. And sometimes that's what I want from a movie. And I think that's what I wanted that day. So I really liked it. But like you said, I think with what it's doing, it could have definitely gone in a different direction and made us feel a lot more or really consider our existence a lot more than it did so to some people that'll be a detriment to some people that's like great i didn't need that i just want a funny spooky movie mm -hmm. and that it is so what would you rate it i'm giving it a six out of ten i gave it three stars which i thought was hmm. made sense three out of five three yeah. out of five seems so much better than a six out of ten but they're the same hmm <laughs> i Seven? Six okay. and a half? Seven? We Feels had fair. our movies basically ranked the same. Right? Because what did you give? Um, what did you give the first one? I don't remember. Like we had Exuma as the best one. This is the second best. And we had. I don't know if Strange Darling. Strange Darling is the worst of the three, I thought. Well, I it was it. for you. I thought you did. Don't too. put words in okay, my mouth. Because right. I don't remember what I said already. <laughs> if you ask me to re rate it, I don't know. I need to have the conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> You got me to lower my score because I was going to give that higher than I'm I did. sorry. All right. I'm just telling you how I feel. You made a point that, while annoying in the way it was presented, made sense. Oh, that's sense. just rude. 
<laughs> the way it was presented. I, it's because I, I should have just rambled <laughs> instead of keep going back to it. I was worried I didn't want to just be mean all at once. So I was like, well, let me throw it in here and there. Mm. But mm. So it seemed more annoying. Well, someone else go and watch it and tell me if I was right. Yeah, I would love to know if people saw these movies, what they thought overall. I'm definitely going to post about all of these on TikTok and Summer Guard, as well as Instagram. So check us out there. Comment and let us know what you thought of these movies. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? I've seen a lot of people put all three of these on their favorites of the year list. I made... A Reddit post. I made a face. Sorry, I would yeah. nowhere near my, my favorite horror movies of the year. But I that's made fine. a Reddit post that was like, what are your top five horror movies of the year? And each of these had made features, but Strange Darling is definitely the one that came up the most, which is interesting since you hated it. I hate's a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> he can't defend I it. I hate it. There are fine parts to it. Fair enough. I Maybe I'm just a... I. It, do, it comes down to the form. I'm sorry. That's not what I keep yep. saying to. Okay. A movie needs nope, to justify nope, its nope, form. Nope, nope, This one doesn't. Nope. <laughs> We're done. We're done there. Example, nope. 1911. What's that movie called? 1917. 1917 completely justifies its form. God damn it, Matt. Birdman nope, justifies nope. its form. But, oh, yeah. Birdman is a work of art. I love that movie yeah. so much. And completely justifies its form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop. All right. Are we done? <laughs> yeah. You're ready to be done? You're be done. done with my shit? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening to Horror Hour with the Hannas. Make sure to listen to future episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or wherever you can find podcasts. You can follow us at Horror Hour with the Hannas on TikTok and Instagram for more content. If you like the podcast, please follow and leave a review on your favorite podcasting app. Happy hauntings!